In today's session, we have very fascinating uh, panelists today, and they come from AR and VR, both sectors, and cross-section of technology, enterprise domain, consulting domain, those kind of things, right? So we have, uh, in the morning session, we heard Dr. Swami, he was talking about taking risk, risk-taking abilities. And then until unless Indians start taking risk, we cannot become a superpower, we cannot we cannot produce Microsofts or Qualcomm's or Googles of the world, right? So, <clears throat> so we have in our panel today. We have uh, let me let me call on stage uh, Mr. Abhijit uh, uh, Kabra. He is a managing director of Accenture Digital. <laughs> Mr. Sriram Ganesh. Uh, he is working on augmented reality platform. And uh, <laughs> the third one is Mr. Divyanshu Ch uh, Chuchra. He is from Samsung. <laughs> and the last one, Abhishek Gupta. He is from Grey Colonel. He has traveled all the way from, so Abhijit came from Pune. He is based out of Pune and Abhishek based out of Noida. Abhishek is running a company called as Grey Kernel in VR Enterprise Domain. Okay, fine. Okay, sure, sure. So I think some of uh, when we asked uh, who who is aware of augmented reality and virtual reality technology, many hands uh, gone up. And so I'm assuming that most of you guys have some kind of exposure to these technologies. And uh, in a nutshell, if I want to describe uh, these two technologies, obviously it's a very vast subject and lots of development is still happening, lots of research is still going on, lots of billions of dollars are still being pumped by big four companies into, into these technologies. And uh, if I would like to describe augmented reality, then I would say if I am wearing these glasses which are augmented reality enabled, then I can scan this room, right? I would be augmenting things on the real world. So I can scan this room and I can start looking at some interesting profiles. Maybe if I am uh, having this, okay, there is one doctor sitting here. And uh, what does this doctor do? Oh, so he was MBBS, after that he graduated in computer science and then he is doing research on yoga and uh, Ayurveda, right? So that's the power of augmented reality. And augmented reality is not just for uh, these kind of conversations, but also in our panel, people will talk more about these technologies. But in industrial revolution, this technology is actually making a big role. Why? There are a few reasons for that. One is everybody talks about operating profit margin these days. They want to increase their operating profit, right? And how do you increase your productivity per person? And these days, providing training on th these machines, by the way, have become so complex these days that providing technology training on these machines and then uh, taking that resource through that uh, particular machine for years and years has become a really challenging part. So these kind of technology play a great role because you just wear and everything is sitting on cloud enabled with machine learning, uh, AI and so many other uh, technologies in the background and they will do lots of things for you. And now, the second thing is about virtual reality. How many of you have experienced high-end virtual reality headsets like STC Vive, Oculus Rift? Okay, there are few. <coughs> How many of, of you have seen uh, this movie Padmavat? There are quite a few. So now you imagine, now you imagine that you are playing a part in that movie, right? So there is, uh, uh, there is a story, there is a saying about Gora and Badal in this particular movie, right? 
and then these guys actually fought with Khilji's army and they took away Ratan Singh from his cap captivity. So if I have to become, I have to go inside that, that space, inside that space and play a role there, then I can do all these things with virtual reality. And this virtual reality is not, say, not something which we have not experienced. In fact, Bangalore is also not just software hub. It's also hub for meditation, so many other things, right? So when you go, how many of you have experienced meditations? Many of you. So in meditation, most of the time, they ask you to close your eyes. And once you close your eyes, then they, then they, they take you through various experiences, right? So you go into the virtual world there. They can take you to completely into a different world where you are experiencing as if it is happening in front of you. Isn't it? So that's what. So when you wear this headset, then you go into that virtual world, cut off from this external world completely. Once you cut off from this external, external world completely and then experience is amazing, then you can really experience all these things. Now the virtual reality world is not just uh, about the experience through your eyes, but also through other senses. People are talking about smell sensing capabilities. People are talking about uh, different kind of controllers being put up on your body and then tracking your hand movement and other movements. Uh, so it is also being used in military training, for example. Correct? So suppose if we create a virtual world, of IMB and what will happen in some kind of disaster? How would people react? One thing is to show a video to those people and video we have seen how many people take attention to a video when that video is being shown in airplane. Not many, right? 90% people if you ask in case of emergency what do you need to do? In airplane many people would not be able to tell what they need to do, how to take out the emergency jacket. But once you create a scenario where you go inside that space, when you go, suppose somebody, some disaster is happening here, and then you are going into this space, and then you are experiencing, and then you are saying, okay, you are being guided by somebody that you need to take these particular actions. And those actions are being performed by you as if you are inside that space. Right? So virtual reality is all about, virtual reality is all about storytelling. It's all about storytelling, right? Augmented reality is all about superimposing things in the real world. And there is another thing which is mixed reality, which is something here, something there, right? So there are lots of, the things are not yet settled. People are still talking about pilot runs. People are still talking about experiences. People are still talking about Okay, this 2017 was a big year for VR and AR. 2018 would be even bigger and all these things. We will have to see how it goes. Right? On this note, I would like to, to invite each of our panel members so they can give a perspective from their own end. Because we have one person, Abhijit, he is from Accenture, where they see uh, anywhere in the world whoever is working on virtual reality, augmented reality, enterprise segment, or entertainment segment, most probably one of the requirements comes to Accenture as a consulting partner or an implementation partner, right? So they will have more things there. Then we have uh, the other panelists, so I would like to invite Abhijit first to give us perspective. So, uh, you know, a couple of things from my perspective. Number one, virtual reality, augmented reality is actually here and now. It's not something that's, you know, out there in distant future or something like that. I mean, in fact, Pokemon Go or, you know, some of you must have also seen games like Wii and all that, right? Those are all in one way or the other uh, part of uh, virtual reality or augmented reality. So, it's been there for at least five years plus. Something that was, I mean, we, we were not calling it virtual reality at that time. Um, so, I mean, it, it is going to be one of these biggest innovation wave uh, that digital technology is going to drive and, you know, I think all of you, those who have been um, in industry or, you know, trying to do your own startup 
solutions or something as long as you are in digital world or maybe you know not digital world um, uh, you are in a retail or any other industry I think you need to um, you know take note of this virtual reality wave understand as to how it could disrupt or how could it uh, innovate the way you do things, the, the way you deal with your customers, or the way you uh, conduct your business and how can it be made better and different. Um, you can't escape from this, you can't say okay I'm a XYZ company and I'm only dealing in this and so I'm immune from this technology disruption, that's not going to be the case. That's the main point I wanted to drive. Um, number two, if you look at virtual reality like uh, Sunil was telling earlier, uh, at the core of this is really the customer experience. By doing all of this, what are you really doing? You are improving the experience of the customer, you know. Uh, sitting here, if I go to, be, or you know, if I wanted to buy a car, sitting here, BMW could give me, um, you know, virtual reality gadgets and I can experience as if I'm driving the car sitting here. Sitting here, I could say, okay, will the car fit in on this stage? How far can I go? You know, if I open the door, will it hit Ramesh? I mean, will it hit uh, Sri Ram here or not? You know, all those kind of things. Can it? Can I fit it in my garage and those kind of things? And if I am able to do this, if I am able to visualize this, then my um, decision making would be faster. I'm more likely to buy the BMW or make the decision of buying purchasing uh, then and there. So you know that I think uh, whenever uh, you are working on virtual reality, you need to keep that in mind. It's not so much about technology. Of course, technology uh, is playing the biggest role in this, but ultimately it is how do you use this technology in creating better customer experience and create solutions uh, that will help you uh, wow the customer. And you know, obviously because of that, benefit your uh, business or make the uh, decision happen um, in the moment. Um, and then to be able to create that you know, very, very good customer experience, uh, you need to work on variety of things. Number one, you know, you need to have the right technologies available to you, but you need to also look at how do you make that uh, solution end to end, you know, what is that ecosystem? It needs devices, it needs, you know, some cloud infrastructure, it probably also needs deep domain knowledge. You know, if you are talking about selling BMW using virtual reality, then you need to understand how a car is being sold. You need, you need to understand the dealer uh, system that it works, right? Or if you are talking about retail or fashion, you know, how there are connected fitting rooms, you know, you need to understand how the retail uh, business work, and, you know, real estate, gaming, one of these, all of these are finding uh, or taking up uh, AR, VR in a, in a big way. And um, time is like here and now, um, otherwise you know in digital world there are only two states possible. Either number one, uh, you know either you are the disruptor or zero, you are the disrupted, you know. So you just need to see, can you be the, you know, Airbnb or Uber in this space um, within your respective industry. Okay, thank you, Abhijit, and uh, let's hear from Sri Ram uh, in a brief. Uh. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the way we think about this is uh, um, that we think about uh, both AR and VR as new computation platforms. We think about them in the most simplest way as new way of delivering information that previously was uh, not very optimized. So I'll give you a simplest example. The greatest use cases in technology industries comes from without the use of the word. So uh, uh, any use, anyone who tries to tell you that the use case begins with you can use AR to do this is usually generally not the most ideal situation. What you want is, uh, for example, uh, when you walk out of your, if you, if you, if you, for example, work at an IT park somewhere next to Sarjapur and you've just moved into Bangalore and you're just like roaming around and trying to find a house. What you're essentially trying to do is you're looking at apartments around you and you're like, you know, maybe I want to live here. This looks like a nice apartment. The problem with that scenario is that the information flow is broken. What you do today is you look at that apartment, you then you move into a text-based approach to search where that apartment is and then try and find an apartment and we all know how horrible that is. Uh, but imagine a scenario where you look at an apartment and you just get information. So essentially you're breaking all of the barriers that it requires to access that information in the right context and in the right way. And um, uh, and 
uh, the, the it's it's extremely important to understand how big a computation platform or a platform the camera by itself is. The camera is going to be the camera is going to be synonymous across almost all devices going forward. If there is anything that is even remotely mobile, it is going to have a very high-end camera built into it with some amount of computation power. Uh, just with these two things, you can build incredible AR experiences. And uh, at so uh, Kaushik and I, uh, Kaushik, my co-founder and I, founded who that. Essentially, our plan was, you know, several people were working at very high-end, military-grade uh, uh, use cases and technologies. Our thought process was that we want to be able to democratize building this technology and be able to reach uh, maximum amount of people, and that's essentially the space that we operate in. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Divyanshu, and I am from Samsung. And Samsung makes devices which make uh, changes the lives of people. So that's what we believe. And uh, in the last three, four years, Samsung has seen VR technology as a very promising uh, technology which can bring changes in lives of the customers. And uh, when we thought of that, uh, one of the first product that was launched was a Gear VR, which is a mobile VR experience where you can, uh, where we came out with a headset or a HMD, we call it, head-mounted device, and you tuck in a smartphone like a Galaxy S7 or an S8 into the Gear VR and you are teleported into the world of virtual reality. So this is in partnership with Oculus, which brings the VR stack uh, to Samsung platform. And now we are also partnering with Google to bring daydream VR experiences to uh, Samsung smartphones. So this is one end of spectrum where uh, you know, smartphones are used to uh, make mobile VR possible, which was... So, uh, Divyanshu, just to um, have another question. So, how many of these kind of devices are available from Samsung in the market? So, currently this VR experience is available on uh, S6 onwards. Uh, so, how many Gear VR yeah. boxes? So, are? The around 5 million of uh, Gear VR are oh, having an install great. base. And Google also came up with Cardboard, which also uh, reached around 2 million of uh, install base. So cardboard gives a very raw experience of VR, whereas Gear VR is more, uh, you know, a little more uh, refined experience. And coming to the next uh, set of devices, uh, HMD. So recently, one more device like ODC was launched, which is a, a tethered VR headset, which tethers with a PC and in partnership with Microsoft. So that brings more additional capabilities like motion tracking, which is very important for an immersive VR experience, where you can have a 6DOF, uh, you know, uh, 6 of I mean that 6 degrees of freedom movement available to the user to have uh, in a VR environment, which is not possible, for example, in a mobile VR, which is only 3 degree of freedom, which is rotational. So Samsung is one of the biggest provider of VR experience in phone world? Yes, I would say that Samsung is one of the leading uh, VR providers in the phone, Great. mobile VR. Thank you. And, uh, so Abhishek, uh, <coughs> Abhishek is running a virtual reality company, which is... Uh, which is doing work in education domain, right? Education, exactly. he is building education ed tech platform, right? And uh, in the, again, in the morning session, we heard about Dr. Swami that he was talking about, until unless we improve our, our own education, educational world, we deploy technology in education world in India, we are not going to win this war, right? So, tell us more about that. Okay, so I'll just start uh, from the very basics. 2014, me and my partner, Sranshul Chindok, both of us are gamers, right? So, we like actively gaming uh, day and night whenever we get time and all, right? So, one of the things we have been often thinking that what if it, there is a possibility for a moment that I can get into a game? What, what, what is the possibility, like Mr. Sunil said that, what if you can be a part of a, a Padmavat or a movie like that, right? So, one of the things, uh, my early uh, uh, days problem with the education system is I was very poor with the photographic memory or being able to set up the contextual information. Like, for an example, there is a sixth grader who in his lifetime, for the very first time, is presented with the concept of uh, Newton's say law of motion or laws of gravity or something like that, right? So for him to be able to perceive the entire thing from a textbook which could be written in a different language that the person is comfortable that myself in my particular case I am a student of UP board which is like typical Hindi medium and I had a, a, a decent a fair share of issues with while reading the textbooks in English as well, right? So for a person like me 
what are the opportunities to learn things if you don't have a very dedicated teacher or an opportunity to get a mentor and all right so one of the things which are present these days is like smart classes or maybe CVTs which are available, computer based training which is available on YouTubes and all right, that kind of a supplementary material. But yeah, Abhishek, I will just um, have a question here. Yeah. Because all these things, mm. smart classes or HMDs mm. and for most of the people aliens. Mm. Most of the people are not able to relate to these things. Okay. So can you give us uh, one example, workflow, what do you do? Exactly. So, so I was just coming to the fact, let's speak about one of the use cases. Let, let, let us just take the same example of teaching someone. My idea of teaching someone new is law of gravity, right? So say there is a sixth grader, he's presented with a virtual reality headset. He wears it, he finds himself immersed in a town where Isaac Newton was living. He finds Sir Isaac Newton right in front of him. And there is a fair share of AI and machine learning which is providing a lot of contextual information to what this topic is all about. So I start so suppose, to uh, I yeah. have to provide this particular chapter in VR. So okay. what do I need to do for so that? Okay, so from the workflow perspective or the designing perspective, so first of all that you need to come up is with a storyboard because the way things work in a 2D world or in a YouTube video or a, uh, or a CBD is fairly different the way things work in a virtual reality environment, right? So you have to think about seeing anything in a 360 degree perspective or a field of view, right? So you have to think about a storyboard which fits in the interactive format and looking at a 90 degree or 110 degree FOV or a field of view which is currently the limitation when any of the hardware is available in the market and then you have to figure out what are the observational elements. So say right now I'm, st uh, I'm sitting alongside Sir Isaac Newton, what, I'm the thing, what are the things which I'm going to observe in these environment, right? How the things are going to get my attention. So say Sir Isaac Newton is right in front of me but at the same time the system or the curriculum wants me to look at the interplanetary system which is set up in the other side of the curriculum. So I would have to see some pointers or the attraction point maybe particles flowing around the system. So you have to design the storyboard then the 3D modeling happens then the same content is taken to a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine. Most of the techs are common in these days and then you have to start building the programming and the interactive systems out there. So it's a complex process looks like. Um, at yes. Um, at least the way you are describing it looks like a very complex process. And de designing good content is definitely a complex process, right? So uh, uh, there, there are YouTubers, right? So uh, uh, a common YouTuber does the same content and then there are likes of AIB and TVF who deeps down a lot of intelligence into their content, right? So if you would start designing the good content, there is definitely a complex process out there. Okay.